What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the weekly challenge. I am Rob Barrington from BridgeLesson.com, and I got to tell you, I'm uh, I'm a, not on necessarily a losing streak, but we in the last two we've tied the robot. Honestly, that was a gift. I thought we were losing that one, and then last week we actually lost to the robot, and really. It was a decision I made early in the challenge where I could have bid a game myself, but I decided to invite instead and the robot didn't accept. So, you know, we, we learn our lesson there. We'll, we'll have to be a little more forceful with, with our choices going forward, knowing that we can't necessarily rely on the robot to uh, do our job for us. So lesson learned. Uh, and here we are again. It is Monday. We're playing match points this week, which has been a pretty good run for us. I don't want to jinx it, but uh, last time we, we kind of destroyed the robot in this format, but really you know that was a while ago we'll see what we can do now uh and you see this first hand right here very normal one no trump opener right we have a balance 16 so we're going to start there and we're going to see where we end up on the flip side here so one no trump all right your favorite contract and mine one no trump and obviously i'm joking about it being your favorite contract i know a lot of you really struggle in this contract and for good reason it is a tough spot usually because it usually means if we're if we've agreed to play one no trump it means that the points around the table are relatively evenly distributed and as you can see here they're perfectly distributed right our partner has four points we have 16 that's 20 which means the opponents have 20 as well taking seven tricks when you only have 20 points is actually really tough usually but there's a process to every no trump contract that is repeatable and that's what i'm going to take you through right now so first things first uh we're going to count our winners on this hand and unfortunately well how many would you count initially here take take a moment get yourself into the game here how many winners are we looking at folks <laughs> It's not too pretty. I'm going to count two, uh, only because this lead is guaranteed to give us a trick, right? Watch this. When they make this lead of the two of hearts, we automatically have a finesse that's going to produce an extra trick. So we're going to play the jack or the queen at this point. And we're either going to win that trick in the dummy right now, or they're going to cover with the king. And now whatever honor is left will be a trick as well. Uh, but really, that's it. The second step is where are our extra tricks going to come from? And in one no trump especially, it's usually not clear cut. Uh, here we can see we're going to take three extra diamond tricks once we get rid of the ace. So that is clearly a spot we're gonna work on, but also take a look. There are other opportunities in the black suits as well. Spades has an opportunity for an extra trick. Uh, clubs as well, but those are suits that, you know, we prefer the opponent's lead, or at least we will wait until we create some diamond tricks before we actually uh, take care of those tricks. So here we're going to play the jack, and we're just going to make sure that, that we get a trick here, right? And this is our free finesse being executed perfectly. This is really nice for us when we see the 10 to our right. It, it suggests that the king of hearts is to our left, and also... If we trust the robot's lead, and this is, a, this is a reach, right? We should know that West has exactly four hearts, which means East has three. And how am I getting that? Well, if there's four there, there's three in our hand, that's seven. There's three in the dummy that we started with, that's 10. That leaves three here. And how do we know it's exactly four in the West? Well, if that's a fourth best lead, that is the lowest card they can have, right? So in this spot, they can't have any more than that, so they have exactly four. Again, if the robot is being normal here, we have no idea. Their, their lead structure is kind of weird. Um, but the really nice thing about this is we should assume that the king is here. So not to say that this is going to be any good for us, to be honest. But if left-hand opponent gets the lead first, they're going to have an issue leading hearts initially. So we might gain a little bit of time and maybe they break one of these black suits for us uh, and give us an opportunity rather than leading away from their king of hearts when they're on lead. However, if right-hand opponent gets on lead, we have no answer to a heart through. So we'll see what happens when we play a diamond here. Who's going to win this trick? Be mindful of where you want to end up uh, in certain spots on these hands. Now, the north player has an entry that we can create with that 10 of diamonds, right? So we wanna make sure not to waste that because we might need it to eventually lead a spade towards this position here. So we just wanna be mindful of these spots. And I can tell you just as a general rule, if you have a number of entries in one hand and very few in the other, it's usually prudent to kind of keep the entries in that hand that lacks a bunch of them, right? So here, we're just gonna lead a low diamond towards our king. 
and we don't really care if we see the we like that we see it here now if the ooh, okay good so they couldn't lead a heart right they they cannot lead a heart from their side they can see the writing on the wall here if they do that they're likely to give up a trick so they have to break one of these black suits and honestly they broke the one we probably want them to break uh so here we'll let them win the ace we expect a heart through Ooh, this is nice okay so good question here um, usually this doesn't mean that they have the queen, right? So, so usually the robots are pretty good about not leading away from honors. However, they, they sometimes can do this. And let's just take a look at that last trick. The six of spades was led, which honestly should suggest maybe some strength. I can't really tell. It's tough to read because we still have, uh, the four, sorry, we have the four here. So the five of spades is the only one that's kind of below that. Um, I don't know. Let's take a look. We can play low and then hope for some sort of reasonable break, but that doesn't seem as likely as just taking a finesse here. And let's just do another accounting of our winners, folks. Uh, we have one in the bank. We're going to take three more diamonds. That's four. The ace of hearts, that's five. And the king of spades, that's six. So we're almost home free. Uh, we could just let left-hand opponent win this and put them on lead again as well. Now maybe they break another black suit like the clubs, or they get confused and think spades is a is a useful spot for them. So let's just let's take a moment, right? If we think the king of hearts is there, they might just give us a trick by leading a heart. They're going to give us a little bit of timing by leading a club, but if it goes club to some honor to our right, now it goes heart through, and now we might be back in in a spot where now we can't take a spade finesse, right? If the queen is right for us, it's a tough spot. Uh, okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna play a low spade. We're gonna hope that they either decide to lead a spade or lead a heart. There it is, okay, good. So uh, two things are awesome here. The finesse was gonna lose, and here they're clearing the suit for us. This usually suggests that they have something like uh, just the queen left, right? But here, before we do anything, folks, let's just count our winners once again and make sure we're okay. So, so right here, we have two winners in the bank. We know we're gonna take three more diamonds, that's five. The ace of hearts is six, and the jack of spades is seven, right? So let's get to some business here. I'm actually going to not cash the jack of spades just yet. Uh, eh, maybe I should here, let's take a look. No, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's cash the jack of spades and pitch a diamond, all right? We're just gonna kind of bleed them out of some cards and maybe make a lead that we get to end play our left-hand opponent possibly. Remember, this is match points. We're trying to take as many tricks as we possibly can. So now we get to play diamond to the 10 and the queen and now the jack of diamonds. Lefty's gonna have to protect hearts, right? So let's see if they actually do this. Now, do we have, do we have the stones to actually go through with this i don't think so i think we've done pretty well so far i could lead a club at this point but you notice i've i've come down to probably left hand opponent having i didn't see them pitch a heart so they have at least two hearts i mean the, the thing is if they have a singleton honor right here in clubs like stiff ace stiff king and just hearts left three three cards in that heart suit they are kind of end played but i don't think they would come down to that so i'm too much of a chicken i'm going to cash these of hearts and here i'm thinking just scoring wise i'm thinking okay i've already done well to take seven tricks right i i, I created some sort of spade trick by letting the opponents lead that suit and here i just don't want to risk going down one at this point which looks like if righty has a heart we probably weren't going down one uh, but here, let's see what was happening. Yeah, it looks like Lefty did have two clubs, so they could have untangled that position. And, ooh, the King of Hearts was wrong for us. Look at that. Okay, good. It didn't matter. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, and again, a weird choice by the robots. Let's take a look at what we would do normally with this hand as far as a leader is concerned. So, and this is a lesson to you guys. You can't really take uh, the robots' choices as far as their opening leads uh, at face value right so so here this is a ridiculous choice the two of hearts let's just make this clear folks when you're leading against no trump as a defender right you're you're going to lead your fourth best from your longest and strongest so when you see a low card like this there are two things happening that's length which means it's at least four cards and it's also strength at least one honor in that suit unless you have like five small or something like that you could still lead fourth best you know with the length hoping to develop to tricks when you have entries but here kind of a weird choice of leads by them if you were going to lead a heart folks 
you would lead top of nothing from this holding just to avoid any confusion. You'd lead the eight of hearts. And that that's not necessarily the worst choice of leads. What it says is, look, partner, I'm trying to find where your values are or I'm trying to find tricks for you. And it, it usually suggests that you either have a problem in the other suits or you just have such a bad hand that you expect partner to take tricks or you're trying to hit them. So a major suit in a, in a strict no trump contract is usually pretty good. Another choice would obviously be the seven of clubs. That is a traditional fourth best lead and that would be a pretty good lead for the opponents as well but as you can see the way this is played out and let's just take a peek at what the robots would say are they beating this yeah they're beating this on almost any lead they just happen to get this wrong they didn't have the tempo on this by getting to their best suits right away and notice once they lead a heart they can still get me right and at this point i'm oh it looks like a, the club maybe from me would be good but here we're still down one and there it is guys the spade choice is bad for them. And now here, now we just have the rest, especially when they lead that queen of spades. So here it looks like the best we could do from that particular point was, uh, was where we ended up. So starting off pretty well, plus 90, not too bad. Uh, we will see what that ends up being. I mean, the auction will be the same. It'll be the question as to how many tricks the robots can take. And take a look guys, another one no Trump opener to start. Let's keep this train rolling here. A nice 15. We're gonna open a no trump. Let's see if we're playing one no trump again. Ooh, no, we're gonna be a little higher this time. So that's Stamen. Give me a four card major. There's my major. And now, and now the robot invites and we have to decide. Now, just in a vacuum here, you would not be accepting in this case. So like, take a look at this hint. You have a flat 15. You don't have an, a side five card suit. You do have a shortness point, right? The ace small of spades over here is, is uh, is a good good value to have but think about a good eight or nine from partner right that's the that's the value they're going to have over there we might we need a very good hand for partner from partner to be able to accept or excuse me to be able to expect that we are going to make game here i'm not saying it's beyond the realm of possibility obviously but in invitational sequences just go go with your your hand in the range that you've shown so you've shown 15 to 17 where are you in that range well you're at the low end of that range right you have some upper value with the ace double ten of spades right you have a roughing value in your hand however jack third of diamonds isn't necessarily a full value situation here so we're kind of chopping action in that spot so 15 is where i would put this hand so that means i'm gonna pass and if we make a game oh well i don't think the robot will bet it at the other table uh, and here we see another suspect lead, right? This could be a fourth best lead, but in a suit contract, it's a totally different animal, folks. We're supposed to lead low from three small, right? So this could certainly be something like that from our opponent as well. And look at that diamond suit, guys. We, we have avoided having an issue with that suit, essentially, right? So, so here, one cool thing is we might, might be able to set up a pitch in one of these hands in this diamond suit, right? Uh, the question is, is it going to be super useful for us? I don't know. We'll find out. But but this lead is interesting. It's likely not away from an honor, but if it's away from the 10, we have a, a free finesse here for, for that card. Or if it's away from the queen, we might be able to scrape together an extra trick as well. Uh, here, I, I think they're less likely to lead away from the queen than they are from the 10. So I'm going to play low from dummy. And if the West player has the 10 of spades, guys, East is going to have a choice. They can either play the queen if they have it, right? And we win, we'll win the ace and we'll have a pitch over there. Or, right, they can just play low and we'll win this with the eight if they have neither of those cards. So here, let's see what happens. We're going to play the deuce. Ooh, yeah, we love this. We love it, All right? So there's that eight of spades. And now the question is, how do we take advantage of this situation? So if we lead a heart to the ace right now and a heart back towards our hand, which to be honest, is usually the best way you're gonna play this, this particular card combination, low to the ace and low back to the queen 10, and we'll make our decision then. But if we do that, guys, we, we're guaranteed to lose a heart in that, in that situation at some point, which means they can cash three diamond tricks and just kind of take that trick away from us there's also another line here that's pretty interesting we can rough some clubs in that dummy right we're gonna have to rough in one of these hands that's relatively short and i think that's probably going to be our best line here once we uh once we can maybe create a pitch as well from this hand let's see what happens right I'm, I'm i know i'm kind of garbling up my speech but i'm thinking at the same time maybe i should pause this but i want you i want you in on my just inner workings as, as bad as they might be sometimes but here 
I'm leaning towards starting off with Ace of Clubs, King of Clubs, Rough of Club. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to cash the Ace of Spades. And I'm just going to set up the ability to pitch a diamond. Now, this might not work if spades are like 5-2, five, uh, five, 5 on my left, 2 on my right. But here we see they've played low high to my right as well, I believe. The first trick was a, was a card lower than the 6. So now let's play Ace of Clubs, King of Clubs. And the, the dream scenario is if we see the, the queen fall at, when we rough this 4. And we'll rough low, hoping that's, that's living. Good, good, good. Okay, King of Spades pitching a diamond. And now comes the question, what do we do, right? Well, I'm going to I'm gonna keep going, man. I'm going to play this jack of spades. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, let's see. What does that give us? That was 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're going to take a little mini finesse here in, in the heart suit. Okay. Here comes a diamond. We've already pitched a diamond, so we've limited our losses over here. Now they're a little wise to our situation, but they're giving us a free finesse here, folks. Interesting. Should we play low? Yeah, we're going to take our free finesse. If we play the queen, we can now rough a club and then cash the ace of hearts. Here, I'm just going to play low and see what they do. There's the ace of hearts. And now I get to play a heart to the queen. And, ooh, nice. They, they divided evenly. We're going to take an extra trick here, folks. Notice what happened. They roughed with the long card to our left. They had king jack sitting over us. So we've really, we've really done well on this one to get the tricks that we're taking here. Now we get to play a diamond. And we get to rough this last one for 10 rippers. That's got to be good, folks. And let's take a look, quick look at the results, and I'll give you a preview of what's going on tomorrow. So here we go, guys. The The key to this hand, really, was starting that club rough off, right? We, we have a situation where we've been gifted this originally, right? And notice West did have that problem, right? Take a look. They get to this point, and they cannot play the queen. I mean, they can. They can play the queen, but we have an easy answer for that. We'll win the ace, play low to the king, and then the jack will pitch our diamond. But also, we have a situation where roughing in the shorthand is going to give us extra tricks every time we can do it. When you have equal numbers of trumps on both sides, four and four, you're, you don't have a shorthand initially. So whichever hand you're roughing in first, becomes that shorthand. So the moment we rough a club, and notice we cash the ace of spades first, I won't make that unblocking mistake in two weeks in a row, folks. I did that, I did it, I had an issue, I believe in the in the weekly or the weekend tournament where I just, un, just forgot to unblock my suit early on. So when you make a mistake, it's fresh in your head, you're, you're unlikely to do it again, uh, at least in, in the foreseeable future. So here it is, ace of clubs, king of clubs, and now when I rough and dummy, I've created that short situation over there, All right? So now if I get to rough again in that hand, I will always gain a trick. And that's our goal here. When we don't see the queen of clubs, we still have that club loser. And we just get the best of all worlds here because now here comes the king of spades. I pitch away my diamond loser. And now I play the jack of spades, just taking this kind of interesting finesse here, right? I thought, to be honest, when I played the jack of spades, I thought lefty had the length, right? So I was going to be able to see what righty did before choosing what trump I would play. And let's say they do something weird like rough with the king of hearts. Now I pitch a diamond, right? So that's amazing if they do that. If not, I get to have a, an answer here. But this was just as good. Lefty with king jack of hearts is just guaranteed to have two tricks when I play low to the ace and low back to the queen, which is what I was planning on doing. So here when they over rough, this isn't bad, right? We've taken this kind of weird finesse and now... It just happens that they lead a diamond, fine. And now here comes a heart. Righty's, righty's on it, right? They figured out what's going on. Too late, though. Now we get to win that ace of hearts. We get to draw a round of trump. And now that lefty has shown that third heart, we're loving life because now we get to rough a club, which we were going to do anyway. If the hearts didn't break, this is the same line we were taking. We were just going to take one last trick. Or maybe sometimes they would even get more here by, by just tapping us out. But here, perfect stuff. Right, you get to take 10 tricks plus 170. Boom, before I show you what's gonna start us off tomorrow, I wanna remind you guys, we have two classes this week. I have added a defense practice, which is a super popular event that uh, I've been running, or I ran once and it was so good that I just scheduled two more. It's at a special time, it's Tuesday evenings. This will give some of those West Coasters out there a chance to join. It's Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, and Wednesday, 3.30 p.m. as always, is the live bridge quiz. We're gonna do one No Trump semi forcing this week. Uh, a really good thing to add to your card, especially if you've been playing two over one for a little bit of time and you play one no forcing, this is more of the expert standard treatment for that bid. And this is 
a ton of fun, guys. Both of these classes are terrific. The defense practice is particularly good if you're just getting into your feel, like making signals and decoding and making the good the good choices on defense. This will kind of give you a ton of practice in that realm. And the bridge quiz is obviously the the uh, my signature class, which is uh, super popular and is topical. You know, every topic that we have is going to be a good deep dive into kind of the mechanics of it and then a ton of practice, folks. So don't forget to join. And if you're watching this on replay like a year from now, these lessons are available on replay. In fact, both of them are designed to be just as good on replay as they are live. So don't forget, guys, sign up anytime you want. And if you've missed any of the live sessions, just join us on the replay. You'll have that same wonderful experience. And here we go, guys. This is what we're starting off tomorrow with. Interesting an unbalanced 14. Let's see what we do with this hand uh, when we join tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Until then, guys, have a wonderful day, and I will see you very soon. Take care.